This time on Pedalbox, we get some nice cold boost into our engine and we finally fix our horrible rear end suspension geometry. Because apparently those two things are related. On my right here are a pair of intercoolers that came out of the TT that we stole the engine and everything else from. Now these are obviously quite chunky and they're perfectly happy cooling all the 225 horsepower worth of hot air that comes out of that turbo. However, there are a couple of problems that make them not so great for our application here. The boost lines into and out of them aren't symmetric one side to the other, which means that the brackets and mounts we build on one side, we can't just copy and paste on the other, which is a little bit annoying, but that would at least be solvable. The bigger problem is they don't actually fit with boost pipes in the back of our car very well at all. It all gets a bit messy and we can't really figure out how it would all work. Now, thankfully, we've got a second option available to us. About a year or so ago, Adrian's A6 got smashed up and we've been able to harvest these out of it. We've done the mass. They're a little bit bigger than the ones out of the TT, which is great. The Hookups on them are perfectly symmetric, which means any adapters we make for one side will also fit the other and everything works. But also the arrangement, the actual angle that the boost goes in and out of the intercoolers is a lot more compatible with our geometry at the back of the car. So, so that we can fit these up, we're going to make a couple of modifications back there. Let's get into that. So what exactly are we trying to solve? Well, when we built these, this was about the second thing we added onto the chassis after the rear arms. And we didn't really know how big the car was going to be, and we really didn't appreciate the width that it was going to end up at. So we were thinking the wheels would come out to about here, maybe a little bit more. Actually, it's nearly five inches beyond that, possibly even almost six inches. And that means once we've got the suspension in and the arms that we've built in, in order to clear everything here, these rear wheels are towing in quite badly. Looking straight down the car, you can see the top rail on the chassis and the wheel almost converge in exactly the same alignment to the camera. You can see the difference a lot more clearly when I put a straight edge up against the side of it and then measure the distance with a piece of steel. Now quickly taking a couple of measurements, we can see across this 65mm span, there is 28mm of difference between the two lengths. Now the suspension isn't particularly well set up at the moment, we know we can bring it in a little bit more in order to deal with some of that toe. However, that does put the tyre very close to the spring and it gives us a few other tolerance issues because we're all the way into our adjustability and we'd like to have a little bit more freedom where we put the wheel. So that means we need to widen these. Now moving this trailing arm mount out just over an inch gives us three degrees of play back that we don't have to try and dial out in the very back of the car in the suspension, which is brilliant for us because it means we've got a much bigger tolerance between the wheel and the suspension itself where it would otherwise clip the spring. Now there is one other problem that we have to deal with in doing this because under this section is where we were going to put the intercoolers. First up, let's have a look at how we're going to extend the mount so we know roughly what space constraints we're going to be working around when we then try and fit the intercoolers. Once again, using an inanimate carbon rod, we can put this across the side of the tyre and see how wide we're going to have to extend it to. You can see to the very outside edge of the tyre, where the rim protector is, is about 150mm. The plate as it stands at the moment is also about 190mm from the back here to the very bottom edge of this plate. We're not too worried about extending this plate any further out because we're only moving this about an inch, so all of the forces are still going to be around this area. This extension really is just to keep these bolts captive so they don't hang out the side of this mount and so we can mount the intercooler to something. Now we've unmounted the trailing arm, we can have a look at the bolt pattern and see where the new holes are going to have to go. Now this inner rear hole is the most congested one because we've got this big hole for the arm to actually poke through and where the mount sits. So that's going to give us our maximum range of fitment. This first hole represents 25mm centre to centre, which gives us about 2.8 degrees back. The other mark represents what is theoretically the maximum we can go to at 31mm. Now we know 28mm is going to give us about 3 degrees, 31mm should give us about 3.3 degrees and is on the limit of what we can realistically get away with in this location. Now the outer holes are slightly different, they're matched front and rear, but if we move these out 25mm to the very edge, we're going to have to drill down into this lip, which we might keep, but we might not. But if we do, we don't want to have to put a drill bit down through it because it's going to wander and go all over the place. So if we move it out another 6mm and match the 31mm uh, distance at the back here, we get more toe angle back and we make our lives easier for fabrication.
Now I've got the extension tacked on, I've also added this cross piece up here just to mount it to stop it flexing around anywhere because the chances are if we knock it with this trailing arm trying to align it, it's going to move out of level and that's going to spoil everything. But that's sorted, we can get onto marking the holes out, 31mm on centre further outboard, and we can drill at least three of the four holes fairly easily. This one in this corner is always going to be tricky because of the lean back on this to match this rear rake. It looks like we probably should have cut the lip off the bottom of this beforehand because thinking about it, we're not going to be able to get the bottom of the bracket any further out with that lip in place, which means this is going to be quite fairly difficult to do, which is a little bit annoying. We're also going to have to cut out an awful lot of material from around here, obviously because of where the mount goes. So this is where the mount sat before, and it had a little bit of adjustment in it, but if we pull it across, First we hit the very edge of the mount under here where that lip is and then as we come across further obviously the side of the mount hits into this so we're going to have to take out a load more material to make this fit and get it into place. Now that we've modified the receiver hole on the trailing arm mount we can fit the trailing arm itself in place and figure out whether it's getting in the way of our intercooler pipes. If we put the intercooler just up here which looks really neat and tidy and it seems great we do run into a small problem where the boost pipe is kind of inside the bottom half of the trailing arm just under the panel here. Thankfully it's not a hard problem to solve. If we just move the intercooler forward slightly in the car we can still fit our elbow in in front of the trailing arm and then run our crossbar to the other intercooler on the far side without getting in the way of anything. We noticed yesterday while we were working on this that when we corrected our toe by moving our front mount outwards it actually messed with our rear camber quite badly, one of the joys of our multi-link suspension system that we've built here. The way we've dealt with this is we've taken out our very short upper control arm uh, turn buckle and put in a much longer one. So we've gone from 70 mil insert to 120 mil. This gives us up to 50 mil more length on our upper arm, which means that we can fix all of our horrible negative camber issues. We can clear our spring and we can get everything back into the correct geometry. But just to make sure that all of our theory applies in practice, we're going to throw the wheel on, bolt this all back together and make sure it's all good. Now these are both finished, we've shot some primer on them. Now while that dries, before we bolt everything back together, we're going to move to the front of the car and just do one more thing real quick. Something else that we've stolen out of the TT, besides the engine transmission and bigger brakes, is its steering rack. It's very similar to the A3 one that we're already using, with one important difference. Instead of being three turns from full left lock to full right, this one is two and a half, although it has the same total steering angle, which means that whenever we're going around corners on track, if we need to do quick little chicanes or anything, there's a lot less angle that we need to throw around on the steering wheel to get round. <laughs> the intercoolers. We've mounted our boost bar across the back here which is just some two and a quarter inch alley tube on a couple of p-clips mounted onto this rail. That's where we'll build the brackets in a little while. The intercoolers themselves now have a 45 degree pipe which comes underneath this uh, mount and misses this part of our trailing arm which was a big problem before. So now we can start looking at how to make the actual brackets that hold the intercooler onto the rest of the chassis. Now the brackets we're making to take the weight are fairly simple. 20mm box with a bit of plate welded over the end. We're using the original boss that came on these intercoolers from Audi. Thanks Audi. And we're going to hold these on like this. Obviously this is from the other side. The other one is currently supporting that end of the intercooler. So we've got this one at this end. We'll build another one from here once it's all on the car. And then on this end there's another boss here which matches this one, and this one will get mounted onto the outside edge of our little wing. Well, that wraps up another episode of Pedalbox. It's been a pretty good one this time. We've sorted out the toe angle on our rear tyres, so hopefully we're not going to go veering into a hedge first time we start this thing up. We've got our intercoolers provisionally mounted. They're not exactly rigid in place yet, but it is enough that we can start building around them, which is a big win. If you'd like to buy any of our merch, T-shirts, hats, stickers, 
Have a look on our website at pedalbox.show slash shop. And if you'd like to support the builds, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. And don't forget all the usual YouTube rituals. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It does actually really help us out. I know we say that every time. It's because it's still true every time. It is. Ask any questions you've got down in the comments. We get loads and loads of questions through back channels. I've got people asking me stuff all the time on like Discord servers and things like that all over the place. So drop them in the comments and we can get public answers for all of you guys on there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>